The new MacBook Pro is getting a lot of attention these days. Not all of it good, but today I'm going to talk about putting Windows 10 on it, what the experience is like. Stay tuned. Let's talk a little bit about putting Windows 10 on a MacBook Pro. Now, we did this video last year, so you can go and watch that for tips and tricks on how to do it. It's the same process with the new late 2016 version. Microsoft and Apple have done a really good job of making this an easy task. So Apple has their Boot Camp app, which allows you to install the Windows 10 ISO. And Microsoft puts their ISOs regularly updated on their site. You don't even need to buy it. You can just download the ISO, install it without a license, and then use it. And if you like it, you can go to the store and buy that license later on. So you may have some questions here with the late 2016 MacBook Pro. So for instance, there is the new Touch Bar and Touch ID features. I'm happy to report the Touch Bar does work. It's not dynamic. So with Mac OS, the Touch Bar adjusts basically to any app you're using with new features. In Windows 10, it stays static. It gives you some media controls, some things for volume, mute, and those kind of things like adjusting brightness. But there's no other features you can use and there's really no way to customize it. Regarding Touch ID, it's a really cool feature for Mac OS. It allows you to log in with a fingerprint. Unfortunately, it does not work at all. And that's only because Apple has not given any drivers to Microsoft to enable that feature. If Apple really wanted to, they could, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to devote any resources to delivering those drivers, which is a bit unfortunate. When it comes to the display, the MacBook Pro 13 inch runs at 2880 by 1800, and you can run Windows 10 at that. Although interestingly, the Windows 10 operating system recommends you run at 2560 by 1600, preferably because of the size and display qualities. Let's talk a little bit about the trackpad on the MacBook Pro. In case you've been living in a cave, Apple's put what could be the world's biggest trackpad on a laptop. It's borderline ridiculous. I don't know why they made it this big. Some people love it. I'm okay with it. How's it run in Windows 10? So it's a force touch trackpad, which means it's not mechanical. It works on a digitizer. Now it still clicks when you press it down. So they give you this single click thing and you can enable a right click like a normal trackpad because macOS does not use right clicks for whatever reason. So that's as much as you can do with it. Unfortunately, the scrolling is gonna be weird. You can't reverse it. There is a registry hack that you can use. And if you go to Windows Central for this article, I actually talk about that. However, what I really recommend is getting an app called Trackpad++. It's a free app. You can donate to the project, which I highly recommend. You can even get a license key for it, but you don't need to. It's completely free. What's really neat about Trackpad++, it enables Windows 10 gesture support. So you can do three and four finger gestures as well as two finger gestures. You can adjust the acceleration and everything else. And there are some limitations here. You can't assign a three finger touch to say Cortana, which is unfortunate. That's how it works actually in Windows 10 when using Precision Touchpad. But you can assign it to things like the Start menu. You can also use the Action Center. You can do reverse scrolling and all sorts of cool tasks. I really recommend this app, it's fantastic. So how is running the trackpad on the MacBook Pro running Windows 10? It's not bad, but it's not the best experience. I can easily say a Surface Book or the new HP Spectre X360 is way better. That's funny because I couldn't say that a few years ago. I actually didn't mind recommend putting Windows 10 on a MacBook Pro for the touchpad experience. But that's changed. It's a good experience, and even with Trackpad++, Plus Plus, it's a lot better. But I would still recommend getting a Surface Book or something else like an HP Spectre X360 or the Dell XPS 13 if you really want the best Windows 10 experience. You can't talk about the MacBook Pro without bringing up its keyboard. It's a little bit controversial. That's because Apple switched to their new butterfly switch mechanism. All that really means is it's got extremely low travel. You bottom out very quickly. In fact, it feels like you're typing on a hard surface. Now, I came prepared to hate this keyboard right out the gate. I actually kind of like it. It doesn't mean I love it, and it's still a better experience on the Surface Book or even the Spectre X360, which is one of my favorite keyboards around. But I actually don't mind this keyboard too much. I actually can type on it, and I got used to it pretty quickly. Your experience may vary, so if you're thinking about getting a MacBook Pro, definitely go try it in the store, but you can adjust to it, and it's not the worst thing I've seen about this device. When it comes to audio quality, the MacBook Pro is definitely one of the better devices out there, and Apple still does a great job with its speakers. Now, I should mention early on, installing Windows 10 on a new MacBook Pro caused some severe issues with people. They were blowing out speakers. Now, Apple's released two patches since then to fix this, so you don't have to worry about that anymore, but if you did blow out your speakers early on, hopefully Apple will give you your money back. 
All right, let's talk about some odds and ends here on the MacBook Pro running Windows 10. So as you probably know, this device has four USB type C ports and that's it. Again, some people really hate this. I don't personally mind this, but I can definitely see where it's gonna cause problems for people. You have to carry a dongle around with you at all times. The good thing about these ports is they're all the same, so you can charge them no matter what. You still have to use Apple's adapter or some other powerful USB type C AC plug to charge it, but overall it works pretty well. The build quality of this device is fantastic. Apple still does a really, really good job of building hardware, and it had no flaws with it, and Apple's really known for this. So you're paying a lot of money for a device, but the quality is definitely there. Now, I wouldn't go and buy this device to run Windows 10 on it and make it your full-time PC. There are much better choices out there that are also a lot cheaper, and you get more stuff. For instance, the Spectre X360, I think, is a great value, plus you get that Windows login with the Windows Hello IR camera. That's some cool stuff. Now, the display is not as high resolution, but it's a good enough display. The Dell XPS 13 is also an excellent choice. In fact, you can get that QHD display. It will blow away this one. Now, if you're looking for the best Windows 10 experience, there's, of course, one device out there. That is Microsoft Surface Book. It's one of my favorite devices. I love the display, which is higher quality. You get that pen. You get an awesome trackpad, awesome keyboard, and that Windows login for Windows Hello. So to bring it all home, I wouldn't go buy a MacBook Pro just to put Windows 10 on it. It's a little bit insane. But if you are a Mac OS user, I highly recommend you download and put on Windows 10 ISO. You can run all the apps, you can install Steam, you can play games on there. It's worth the shot. It's not going to cost you anything except a little bit of time. And who knows, you might actually like Windows 10 and for your next machine, you can buy a real one. So there are my thoughts of putting Windows 10 on a MacBook Pro. If you want my full review, including benchmarks, head to Windows Central for more information. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.